Hello, how are you? I trust you're well, and I knew she was going to do that straight away. Hi, how are you? I trust you're well. This is the latest in our series of reflections based on the Bible in one year reading plan. And today we are focusing on day. <laughs> Hello, how are you? I trust you're well. This is the latest in our series of reflections based on the Bible in one year reading plan. And today we are focusing on days 34 to 40. If you're following the plan, I hope you are finding it helpful. As I've said several times already, and I'll continue to say, if you've got a little bit behind, don't worry about it. Don't try to catch up, just keep going and pick up where you left off. But if you are keeping up, well done for you. But don't feel the time pressure. This week our New Testament readings have been focused on the Holy Week section of Matthew's Gospel. Whilst the Old Testament has mainly been concerned with the conclusions of Job. I can be a bit of an overthinker constantly wanting everything sorted out in my head. And I can process lots of ideas simultaneously and make connections between them. And it is a strength of mine, but like all strengths, it has a shadow side. There is always that one more piece of information I could be hunting down, one more thing I could add to the mix, which can sometimes make me more reluctant to take a final decision or jump into action. And this can also have an impact on my faith. There's never been a time in my life when God hasn't at least figured to some extent in my thinking. But I can remember a season when I was very much adrift in my relationship with God. I still had some sort of faith, but it, it wasn't really driving me or directing me. And yet part of me really wanted to believe. It was just, well, I had those questions. And looking back, I'm not even really that sure how important they were. Many of them I can now identify as a form of resistance, you know, using my shadow side to give me a reason not to commit. They tended to surface when I'd had a few drinks. And I recall one evening they did so in a pub with a Christian friend in Edinburgh. And I remember her answer to me. Andrew, you're never going to have all the answers. If you wait until you have it all sorted out in your head, it's just not going to happen. She was right. You see, sometimes people think of faith as people saying they have all the answers, or it's sometimes even presented in ways as giving us the answers. And I have to admit, sometimes as someone in my role, I, I can feel a degree of pressure to have all the answers. Saying, I don't know, can be a really vulnerable thing to do. It can feel like you're letting the person asking you the question down. You know, what's the point of me if, if I can't answer that? But I don't know can be an honest answer. We were never meant to know everything. I like how Nicky Gumbel describes this in the Bible in one year commentary when he, he describes it as healthy or biblical agnosticism. There are some things which are revealed and some things which are hidden. One of my favorite rock bands is a group called The Choir and they have a song which opens with the lines, more is hidden than revealed. Sometimes the path to understanding is concealed. We don't know everything. But that's not the same as knowing nothing. It's about humbly recognizing the difference between the revealed and the concealed. I suppose I could paraphrase that wonderful serenity prayer like this. God grant me the serenity and trust to acknowledge the things that haven't been revealed. Courage to receive the things that have. 
and the humility to know the difference. Because that would be as good a summary of the end of Job as I could think of. On day 37, after 10 days of Job's question and people trying to answer for God, God finally speaks. But not when he answers. As Jesus often did, when faced with a question, God opens with a question. In fact, he opens with 49 questions, all of them with the same answer. If Job was being honest, he would say, I don't know to every one of them. Nicky Gumbel says it's almost as if God's teasing Job in a way from time to time, said, well, surely you know this. Or tell me, because you say you know it all. And Job has to admit that there are limits to his knowledge. But God doesn't rebuke him for that. God's only really annoyed in Job with those who were convinced they did have all the answers. Much of Jesus' last week was taken up with questions as well. Some come from the religious leaders, others from the disciples. But questions have different motives. Sometimes we don't want answers. I'm pretty convinced some of my questions were like that. We want to keep the questions because it means we don't have to deal with the answers. And the Pharisees and Sadducees were only asking questions to trap or to trick Jesus, to get one over on him. And at one stage, Jesus refuses to answer their questions because they refuse to answer his. And then the disciples are preoccupied with the future, when God is finally going to do everything he promised. And here Jesus tells them, there's certain things that aren't theirs to know. In fact, Jesus at one point talks about what he doesn't know. And right now, down to the present day, there have been those who failed to grasp what Jesus was talking about when he said he would come when he was least expected. Well, either that or they're trying to prove him wrong. So we have the stuff that's revealed and the stuff that's concealed. Stuff we can know, stuff we can't. But there's one other thing Nicky Gumbel says, which I really appreciate. He says, it's not intellectual knowledge that counts, but personal knowledge. Ultimately, it's not about what you know, but about whom you know. Now, that's a phrase that has negative connotations in our culture. It refers to people getting unfairly treated because they have access to those who have influence or take decisions. That's not what he's meaning here. With us, it's very different. It's about knowing whatever we face, God can handle it. So we don't know what the future holds. But as we're drawn deeper into relationship, we come to know the one who holds that future. We don't know when God will fulfill his purposes. But as we're drawn deeper into relationship with that God, we come to know that God is faithful and will keep his promises. And we don't know why in the meantime life is full of struggle and trouble. But as we're drawn deeper into relationship with that God, we come to know that he can bring us through it. Because of Jesus and his death, we, are, we know that we are loved completely with an everlasting love. And because of Jesus and his resurrection, we can know that nothing in life or death will ever be able to separate us from that love. Let's pray. God, grant me the serenity and trust to acknowledge the things that haven't been revealed, courage to believe the things that have, and the humility to know the difference. Amen. Grace and peace go with you.